So check out those. Um, are we going to start doing the tip jar? <laughs> can you edit? You can. You can edit that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. First step. Hey guys, I'm Tommy Clutch Creel again here with Trini with a Twist at High Compression Garage. Thanks for joining in. Today we're going to be going through our first segment of MIG welding. We're going to be using our Lincoln Electric MIG welder, teaching you guys how to properly lay a bead down, quickly set up your machine, get familiarized with it, and get rocking and ready and ready to start fabricating some things. We want to make sure we're ready to rock and roll with, with getting our MIG welder all set up. MIG welder is the easiest way to weld. All you have is you have a simple ground. And you have your torch. That's it. Um, depending on what kind of wire you're using, you're either going to have an external gas, which is a shielding gas, helps preventing any contaminants getting into your weld. Or if you're using a DC current, you're going to have a silver colored uh, wiring that will actually provide your shielding gas for you. So right now we have copper wire. We're using our carbon dioxide. We're going to be welding together two pieces of metal, stainless steel, 304 stainless. And as you can see, there's some rust, some contaminants on these metals right here. The first step you want to do with welding is make sure your metal is clean of any debris, contaminants, and ensure that you're going on a smooth surface. So first step we're going to do is make sure we get our gloves and eye protection on and sand these down to a nice smooth surface. I'm just going to take a, we have our air sander here. I take this down. You can just see all the, all the rust that's right here. I'm going to take this all the way down on this side. I'm going to do the same on this side and we're going to do a fillet weld directly across here and I'll show you how to do proper weld and a weld without the shielding gas as well as we go forward with this. You can see right there takes off all the rust all the contaminants provides a good clean weld also a nice little tip and trick for everyone out there when you're using an air sander never directly just pin this right into the metal and go at it go in a circular fashion that way you will not get any dips or major grooves in your metal as well hey can someone get that <laughs> Again, as you can see, nice smooth surface, good to go, we're ready to get welding. What you're trying to do when welding is melt the metal together, providing a deep penetration between the metals. And you can gauge and critique your weld by the heat pattern all the way through. So now that we've got our, our piece ready and set here, we're going to turn our shielding gas on, the carbon dioxide too. We want to make sure that PSI is no more than 25 on these. So we're going to bring this down a tad, fire up our welder, and in our other segments, I go through the duty cycle of welders, also set up on these, so make sure you check those out. Bring out our two, two leads on this. We want to make sure we have a nice ground. What I'm going to actually do is use another piece of metal, ground that over here, and lay our pieces of metal on top of that. Reason being is I don't want our clamp to interfere with any surface areas on this and distort it. Now when welding, what you want to do first step is to place two tacks. Um, tack is just a simple penetrating bead right there on one end, same thing on the other, holding the piece in place. So when welding, we want to make sure our work surface is nice and clean and also the pieces of metal that we're using are secure. By doing so, we're going to use a magnet and make sure that's held down first. So we can either put it at this end to hold that together, but I will put it at this end considering that we are using another piece of metal. We're going to lay a tack mark right down here on this side, also right here on this side. That will help 
prevent any binding or, consor or constorting of the metal as we move forward. All right, so now with welding, first thing we want to do after getting our work area set up, our pieces ready to go, is make sure we're dialed in and ready to rock and roll for the type of metal and thickness that we have. So we're, we're going to bring this at a higher amperage because we have a thicker gauge metal that we're using and also bring up our heat to a force setting on our Lincoln Electric Welder 180 Dual here. The reason why I don't have my welding mask on yet is because I look away initially to set these tacks. And while setting these tacks, you want to make sure that you have about a quarter inch of wire sticking out. Apply at an angle. Make sure everyone's clear in the room. Everyone clear. And go. And you can hear how that's jumping. That means that we're not on our correct settings just yet. We're going to set one. You want to hear a clear, crisp tone all the way through. Clear. That's exactly what you want to hear. So now that we have that end tacked together, we're going to tack this end. Clear. As you can see, we have a nice tack here. Nice tack, the second one on this side. And now I'm going to run through a clean bead and then I'll show you guys a non-good non bead for bad grammar use. So now we're going to take off this bead, off this tack right here, and do a nice clean weld at an angle, moving in a C pattern, dragging our putt all along as well. You could hear some of the popping that was going on with that. That was meaning I was hitting, that meant I was hitting some spots there. For the most part, that's not too bad of a, a weld. You can see the heat marks on the side, meaning that, that there was good penetration. Also, the beads were pretty much in fair amount, so that means my speed was good. And all together, not a bad weld. So now what I'll do is I'll turn off the shielding gas. You'll be able to hear the crackling and popping of this well without the shielding gas showing that it's not pushing any contaminants away. Ready? What you guys can't tell is that smells horrible right now, like burning oil. But you can tell visual difference between the good weld with the shielding gas and the bad weld as well. This one has a darker tint, burned all the way through. Heat marks are all over the place, and you can see the spatter marks all over. So ensure that you are using a shielding gas of sorts, either DC or AC, depending on the welder and the type you are using, and that will provide you with a good weld. Well, that's our intro video to MIG 101. If you want advanced MIG welding videos or additional videos on how to set up your MIG welder and also different kind of welds, check out more of our videos on Training with the Twist. I'm Tommy Clutch Creel. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah.